To get started with the power supply for the Apollo system, we start with the tractor harness. So the tractor harness is going to have power from the battery going up and supplying power to the 30 amp fuse for the solenoid power relay and also to the 15 amp fuse for the ECU power relay. Those two fuses are then going to transfer the power to the solenoid power relay, so pin E30, and also the ECU power relay on pin E30, or F30. The power is just going to sit there until the tractor is keyed on. When the key is switched onto the tractor, the power will be sent to the monitor. So power is connected through the tractor through the U8 plug and switched power is going to be pins B and C on the U8 plug. When the key is turned on, it's gonna send power and ground switched to the monitor. U1 is the monitor plug. Also, it is going to split off and it's going to send power up to the switched power plug, U10, to go back and turn the rest of the system on. After the keyed power is turned on for the monitor harness and it sends power through to the tractor harness, we'll watch where the power goes on the tractor harness. So from our switched power from the monitor harness, pin I1 is our power. Switch power is going to go to the splice, and then it's going to go down, and it's going to go to the solenoid power relay in E85. It is also going to go to the ECU power relay in pin F85, as well as the switched ground from pin I2. Splices off, goes to pin E86 on the solenoid power relay, and pin F86 on the ECU power relay. Once our relays have been triggered, we can then take and follow the solenoid power from the solenoid power relay from pin E87. It's going to follow through and it's going to go across to the standalone ISO tractor plug located at the back of the tractor. The ECU power relay when triggered is going to send pin to F87. This power is going to go and it splices off, gives us power for our Powell front terminator, and it also splices off and it goes to pin L4 at the standalone tractor plug at the back. Our ground is coming directly from the battery. It comes up, it splices off. It's going to provide power for our Powell terminator at the front, our ground, sorry. It is also splicing off, and it gives us our ground in pin L1, and the ground for our ECU power relay in L2. From our tractor harness, we are then going to go to our front implement harness. That front implement harness pins B1 and B3 are going to go and they loop through. So our power on B3 loops through to plug A1, which is our high current power plug. And the ground is B1 up to A2. These are the powers that came from our solenoid power relay. From our high current plug on our implement harness, we will be going back through the high current power plug on the rear of the tractor. It's pins D1 and D2, which will be the small pins in that large plug. They're going to go through and go to pins A1 and A2. It's going to be a small plug going to the 130 amp relay located close to the battery. The high current power going to our 130 amp relay directly from the battery is going to be on this four gauge red wire that has a 100 amp fuse in line between the battery and the relay. This protects the relay. 
This is a picture of the 130 amp relay. This plug right here is where the two small wires coming back on the high current harness are going to go in. Those two power or those two wires getting the power from the solenoid power on our main tractor harness are going to excite this relay to allow power to be switched to flow through. The two connections for your battery connections and also back into your high current harness going to the rear of the tractor are not specific as to which goes into each side. And the power will go through no matter which way they're plugged in. This is our power coming after the relay. So plug B1 is going to follow through to the back of the tractor to our large round high current plug at the rear of the tractor to pin D3. Once the relay is excited, you'll have 12 volts power. The ground is going to come directly from the battery. So C1 is direct from the battery all the way to D4, which is in our high current plug at the rear of the tractor. Now back on our front implement harness, you'll notice we have two different types of lines and this just makes it easier to identify in this drawing. So the dashed lines are the ones that came from the ECU power relay on our tractor harness on pins B2 and B4. They're going to go all the way, splice off, and they go back to the high current power plug at the rear of the tractor on C1. And the ground from B2 is going to follow back through, splices off, and goes to pin C2 on our high current plug. The other part of the splice goes up. The ground is going to be E7 at our ECU breakout plug. And the power splices off to pin E9 at our ECU breakout plug. The other powers we have on our implement harness are going to be from our high current power plug. Pin A3 and A4 for ground and power. A3 is going to go all the way through to the back to the high current power plug at the rear of the tractor on C3. A4, the high current ground, is going to go back all the way through to the back of the tractor, the high current power plug on C4. They also provide power to our ECU breakout plug when they're spliced off at the front. So going to our ECU breakout plug, splices off, and it goes to pins E8, E12, and E16. It also splices off power to go to our auxiliary power plug located at our ECU breakout. It's a four pin plug, pins H1, H2. The ground splices off and it goes to pins E10, E14, and E18 at our ECU breakout, and also H3 and H4 at the auxiliary power plug. We can now trace power on the rear implement harness. So at the high current power plug, at the back of the front implement harness connecting to the rear implement harness, pins A1 and A2, the smaller wires, is what's coming directly from our ECU power relay on our tractor harness. They follow through, power goes to pin G9 on the ECU breakout plug, and the ground A2 goes to plug G7 at the ECU breakout. The high current, so the large wires in that plug, are providing power once again for got all the different breakouts. For our ECU breakout, we've got spliced off here, goes to G8, G12, and G16. It also provides power to that auxiliary plug located close to the ECU breakout on pin E1 and E2. The ground, A4, is spliced off and it goes to G10, G14, G18 at the ECU breakout. Also ground at the auxiliary plug on E3 
and E4. At our ECU breakout plug on our front implement harness, we have the ECU breakout harness. This harness could either be a triple version, which is the part numbers here for each sub up. There's a double version and also a single version. So a single version would be just this part of the plug here. Double version would be this plug. And the triple version is obviously the full thing. So at the ECU breakout harness, we had our power and ground coming in from E A8, A12, and A16 is our power. Each one of those goes off to the comms plugs. And I'll just explain one as all three are the same. So for example, A8 is going to go across. It splices off and it goes to P pin E1 on the comms plug. So that's the black plug. It also splices off and there's a four pin power plug on the CCU breakout and pins F1, F2 are power. It also splices off to the two pin power plug, which is G1. Same as the ground coming from A10. Do the same for all three plugs. Provides our ground for our four pin power plug in F3, F4, and also ground in G2. And the other two comms plugs and four pin power plugs and two pin power plugs will be the same if you have a double or triple harness. Also in the harness for a 9000, they've changed the power for the switch box power. It comes from pin A9, which isn't on this drawing, but you can see it here. A9 now goes to pin B5, and pin A7 now goes to B6. This gives us power to our scales and our switch box that isn't spliced off going to all the ECUs. This is coming directly from the ECU power on the main tractor harness from the relay. 